All right, so this is my little mini fridge here with the motor on top. This is my unlimited uh, carbonated soda setup. Um, I wanted to do this because I started spending a lot of money on uh, these guys right there. So, anyways, it was a lot of fun, but um, I had to do a lot of research, and I also didn't know anything about all this stuff, so. Uh, water comes in here, under my sink. I don't know if you can see, there's a, uh, a valve there that I put in. And it comes in through here. I uh, got a little um, barb adapter here. And then I switch to the beverage hosing. Going around. Uh, da -da -da -da. Not the cleanest looking setup, but. And I don't have a. I want to get a like a rubberized mount for this so it's not super loud like it is anyways this is um the motor and a pump from uh, McCann's uh, Big Mac carbonator it's a branded uh, setup that comes with the pump the motor and the tank the tank is inside I separated the motor and the tank because I don't want the motor running inside the fridge where it builds condensation and can mess with the motor and water, you know, electrics and stuff. So, um, got the hoses coming out of here. This is the dispenser. I'm gonna drop that. <clears throat> right there. It has a uh, flow control valve inside of it, so uh, you can control the high pressure coming out. Um, adjust it with this little screw right here so it comes out low pressure uh, just some gap filler stuff so seal the hole there oh yeah and uh, I'll explain this I had to I had to increase the length of this power cable here this cable goes back to the tank right here this power cable is connected to this, which is a float valve. So when the tank gets full and empties, it triggers this thing to turn on and off, off and on, which tells it when to turn on the motor, which pumps water back into here. I have a CO2 coming in, CO2 tank in the back. It's gonna be fun when that runs out to uh, have to refill it because that's the only place I could put it back in there there's a little shelf in the back so it limited like my options but anyways so the reason I have this this is a Cornelius keg the reason I have this in there is uh, kind of a buffer so that there's a bunch of water in here first that's already cooled down by the time it reaches this tank uh, if I just had this tank it wouldn't have spent a lot of time coming in to get cold the water so um, and by the way one thing so I have the water coming in it first goes into the pump because you need and by the way you can't use quarter inch you have to use 3 8 inch uh, it needs high volume flow water in here or else I mean you could use quarter inch but it's gonna prematurely kill the pump and that's from the manufacturer um, Anyway, so I think you might be fine to use that afterwards, but I try to use 3 8 uh, everywhere I could. So, uh, also, I found out this little relief valve on the Cornelius keg. It's low, it's, you have to make sure you get a high pressure one, because mine was venting CO2. Uh, so, temporarily, I, I rigged some setup to seal the, the valve so it can't open right now, but I'm, I have another one on order. Um, that's all metal and can stand up to like 120, 130, which is PSI, which is what these kegs are rated for anyways. So, uh, which I only need 100, 100 and so PSI because that's what I have my CO2 regulator set to. Also, 
Uh, this is a tap right regulator that goes up to 160 psi. Sometimes you'll see regulators that only go up to 60. You'll, you'll need uh, the higher option so that um, you can properly carbonate the soda. Um, yeah, so there's, you can see how much condensation builds up there. This has only been running for a few days, this fridge. So, oh, so I got this particular fridge. It's a Danby brand. Um, and it's a very similar model to the ones I was looking up. People said that uh, it doesn't have any coolant lines running on the top, which makes it perfect to avoid. Um, because a lot of people, when they try to do this, they'll hit the coolant lines, and that's a big headache. Um, so I, got, I was able to find one of these on uh, Craigslist, so... Um, also, you have to modify the door because the shelves and all this other plastic stuff gets in the way. So I use like a jigsaw and a Dremel and stuff and whatever I could find. Here's, um, I left this little part sticking out so that it could trigger the light still. It's convenient. And, uh, this is just foil tape to, um moisture seal the exposed um, insulation because the water will deteriorate the insulation um, and this rubber seal comes off very easily for the fridge so you can take it off while you're working on it just pull it off and press it back on um, is there anything else Um, I just have this little cloth here for drips. Yeah, um... I don't know... Oh, um, one thing also I want to mention is these kegs have, um, slightly different diameters here on each post. Um, one for gas and one for liquid. And uh, since what I'm doing is just having the water come in and out of here, um, I found out that it's still fine to use the gas post for water. And obviously the liquid for water is fine. Um, and in a lot of places where quarter inch was only available right here, quarter inch barb, I, ha I had a coupler or a... Um, what do they call it? Um, a reducer to three eighths, three eighths to a quarter inch. I just use those wherever I could. Um, I'll try to create uh, links to everything, and also a lot of uh, some YouTube videos that help me quite a bit. Um, yeah, uh, please ask any questions. Um, yeah, cool. I think that's it. Uh, might as well show you, I guess. Hold on. Okay. Got a cup here. Switch to my left hand. how carbonated it is. Nice and cold. Great. The reason it's cooled is, I mean, not just because, you know, well, at least in my opinion, it's better, it tastes better cold, but the CO2 actually dissolves into the water better um, when it's colder. So, yeah. Alright.